Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. And what I'm gonna do in this video is kinda of go over my guidelines, my do's and don'ts for how you name your messages. All right, before I even get into the guidelines, we gotta kinda of cover the two type of messages that I'm referring to. And those are commands and events. And these are different and they have different guidelines. So I'm gonna go over the guidelines for each one. So let's first, let's talk about commands. All right, so what are commands? Let's clarify that first. Um, and then we'll go over kind of some do's and don'ts here. So ultimately commands are what are gonna change the state of the system, right? They are describing intent from the user or another part of the system of what what the intent is. Like what are the what's the action that you're gonna perform that likely has side effects, right? That's gonna change the state, that's gonna change something within the system. And this can be invoked by, a command can be evoked by an end user, or it could be evoked by some other automated process within the system. But the idea here again is that it's changing state and it's basically a way to define some type of execution of behavior. So that's when we're talking about a command is that it describes the intent to change state. So for some do examples, basically where the way the kind of naming convention works out here is that you generally have a verb followed by a noun. So something along the lines of these three as an example is you place an order, you generate an invoice, you apply a discount, right? So that's kind of the names of the event, place order, generate invoice, apply discount. What I try to avoid here is using kind of CRUD terminology. So avoiding create, update, delete, save, or those types of prefixes as the verb. And the reason for this is to try to gain some deeper insights to reveal what the users in the processes actually are, right? Like how do they actually invoke something um, is it really creating a customer? That's probably really, is, is it saving an order? That's probably not really it, right? You're probably placing an order and that's probably the terminology that would be used. So as I mentioned, try to avoid using kind of crud terminology of create, read, uh, update, delete, or even the word type save. So don't call something just by the verb or by the noun. So don't just call order whether that could be a verb or a noun. Um, and don't call something like get mentioned. Try to avoid, avoid save invoice or save something, whatever the case may be. And then the discount, again, what what is this? Is What the heck is a discount? Is it the, the noun of a discount, the thing that the entity that you're working on? Is it discounting? What is it exactly? So again, go back to um, the dues, place order generate invoice, apply discount, verb with a noun. All right, so let's move on to events. So events are things that have happened already within the system. So that's why I say they are statements of fact. They have already occurred. And when you name them, you wanna name them in the past tense, right? Because these are things that have already happened within the system. And you're using these events to let other parts of the system or externally know about something has happened. So because of this, you wanna name them as if they have already occurred, because they have. So, and generally events are the result of something that has been executed in the system, meaning a command is executed, something has changed or state change of some sort, and this is the result of that command. So as mentioned in a similar way with commands, we wanna do the same thing with events is we wanna to try to avoid the words like created, updated, deleted as any part of our, our naming, right? So good examples of this are generally in the form of a noun and a verb. And more specifically, that verb again needs to be in the past tense because these are events. These are things that have already happened. So good examples are order placed, invoice generated, discount applied, again, noun in a verb in the past tense. And again, avoid things like CRUD terminology here of created, updated, deleted. So don't just use things that are like ordered. Ordered what exactly? And again, as I mentioned with created, invoice created, we're gonna to try to want to avoid that one. And discounted, discounted what? Like is it 
discounted what exactly? If you're talking about the, an ordering system, you want to know that you've applied um, that discount or that something happened, but what exactly just discounted alone mean? It may make sense within your own context, but again, remember that events are being applied or being used in kind of other parts of the system. All right, so second last thing I want to touch on here is the actual naming of your types. Like what are you actually naming these types or classes within your system? And whether you want to suffix these with the word command or event, depending on which message type we're talking about here. And to me, this is kind of personal preference, um, whether you use something like place order or place order command or order placed or order placed event. My only concern here is actual consistency and whether you're doing this consistently or not. So if you choose to suffix one or the other or both, just do it consistently. I think everybody will be um, a lot happier in being able to find relevant commands and events if you just keep to a consistent naming convention. All right, so the last thing to touch on related to naming involves serializing your commands, events, however they're gonna happen if they um, get stored in either a um, a message queue for a command that you're doing kind of a fire and forget type way or events that you're storing in some event store or relational database wherever you're actually storing anything that you need to serialize as a message the key thing here that i've uh, determined is that you don't want to store the type name um, that's actually in your code uh, to, to figure out how to deserialize it so if we're talking about dotnet one of the first things you could think of is if you're using json.net to serialize your type into json you can actually have this um, serialization setting where you can specify the type name handling to all and what this does is it actually adds a dollar sign type property where that then includes the clr uh, clr type name so it includes the assembly and the namespace and the name of your type that way when you deserialize it you can get back to that exact same type the problem with this is, is that you're very likely going to either rename events, move events to different namespaces or assemblies. And if you're trying to get back to say these old events that you've persisted um, before you made this change, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. So rather what you should be trying to do is keeping kind of a static name um, alongside an event and you'll use that name string, whatever the case may be to realize, okay, that particular string, that particular named event is this particular type and do that mapping manually in code and having that mapping. Again, trying to have that property or something lives alongside your event and not using, again, a CLR type or the actual serialized event to try to figure out how to deserialize it. I have an example of this. I created a, a demo for SQL Stream Store um, this is the do exactly this. You provide the name of the event along with the actual data of your serialized um, event object that you can use then to when you deserialize. So I will have a link to the description to that demo as well as this entire blog post which covers everything that I just talked about. Um, I will have that as a link in the description. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more videos in this fashion around um, architecture, messaging, please subscribe. Thanks.